Coming up, we're going to share the top five reasons why you might want to become an expediter. Well, it's five reasons that were good for us. Coming up right after this. And I'm Jim, and welcome to It's a Highway Vlog, where you get to travel the country with us, and you don't even have to leave your Viking ship at home. So while you're steering through that torrential downpour and those big waves, <laughs> don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little notification bell. Ring! So you don't miss a thing. Good afternoon. We are in Minnesota and we are actually at the Albert Lee Travel Plaza, which is like one of our favorite truck stops in the whole country. Unfortunately, we don't seem to get here very often. Especially this, starting at this time of the year. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, Minnesota, it's always, you know, sort of a hazard. By the way, 34 degrees and no snow on the ground. Amazing, yeah. yeah in November. You, you never know what you're gonna run into up here. Uh, so anyway, it's probably been at least two years since we've been here. Um, the truck stop's really nice inside. It's it's nice big store. It's beautiful. They have cheese curds. Yes, they do. And, uh, so we really like to come here. And uh, do they have an ice cream place in here too? I think they do. They do. They, they have a like lot of different. They make McDonald's and Pizza different, Hut and different places inside. Uh, if you're into the food stuff. Yeah. So. Like and they have a restaurant to too with fireplace and everything. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool place. So uh, we stopped here. We're on a Judy's half hour break. Uh, we deliver tomorrow morning in Missouri, and uh, we picked up this afternoon up here in Minnesota. And it's probably going to get dark on us before we finish this video. So we need to hurry. So we need to hurry up. <laughs> so anyway, rest video. I'm just kidding. Uh, Judy and I got to talk in today just a little bit about um, you know we talked about we're going to have a series dedicated specifically to expediting, and we're probably going to start that after Thanksgiving. Uh, we wanted to sit down and go through basically everything that we've sort of learned over the last eight years and we really want to do a, and then we'll be done with youtubing because that'll be uh, it right that'll be it but of course the series will last for 17 years so uh but we we're going to try to do that after thanksgiving we really want to put some time and effort into that so uh this is sort of we were just sort of talking about stuff and we we sort of talked about why do people get into expediting why are people doing what we do um, which led us to think about why did we do what well, we why did we why did we jump yeah ship and um, do what we're doing so we kind of came up with a list of five reasons why you might want to become an expediter or why we thought about becoming an expediter yeah and so we're just going to dig into that list right now and, and so, are we going to share that we're doing this like in the order we're doing it in I was getting there. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Story, if I don't interrupt, I don't get a talk. Story of my life. <laughs> uh, yeah. So why were we doing it? Oh, uh, the order we're doing this in. We're doing this from like number five, four, three, two, one. So the most important reason is maybe at the end. Yeah. So. And these are our rankings of countdown. importance. And uh, there may be plenty of other reasons why other people do Oh, and I'm sure there this, are. This uh, is but this is five. sort of so number five. Dun, 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 dun. We don't need a drum roll. Number five Everyone. is hey, we get to drive a truck. <laughs> which Exciting is, stuff. Which is pretty a cool. Truck. Uh, you know, my father was a truck driver, so I grew up around trucks, and I did not. She did not, but I did. Farm trucks, maybe. Uh, for many, many years ago. In fact, I drove a truck a long time ago, uh, and so it was sort of interesting to me. You know. Um, really remember how we got started down this pathway uh, but you know it's pretty cool you get to drive a truck uh, big giant piece of machinery and you get to drive it and you know you look cool and of course you get to blow the air horn which kids love and you know the truck drivers generally love to do that too so it's just sort of a neat thing so uh, that was sort of an attractive thing for me especially a little no nostalgic but I never forget when I was talking to Judy about this to start with and I think she had an idea that we were going to be in a smaller truck like a u-haul type thing and then when we went and picked the truck up she was sort of like well not when we picked the truck up but when yeah. we first started looking at it she's just like one of those big trucks you know since essentially we drive 
a semi truck with the, that doesn't bend in the middle. So yeah, it's it's pretty good size. So that would be number five. Yeah, and that the other part of that on our part of it, we were leaving careers that we spent many years of education in, and Behind so the desk. yeah, so how you know getting into something that wouldn't take a lot more education, a lot more years when you really wanted to jump right into doing something different right then. Because if you're looking for a career change, sometimes you don't want to wait until you have gone through all the training. So truck driving was something that you could pretty transfer pretty easily out of whatever you're doing into that. Yeah. So um, with the exception of getting your CDL, but it doesn't take years to do that. Right. I had driven trucks before and used to have a chauffeur's license. And so for me, I just went and took the test. And, uh, you know, that was no big deal for me. For Judy, she actually went to school. Yep. for I think two weeks, three weeks to get her class B <laughs> license and she got that on the first time around. Uh, <clears throat> and so, yeah, it didn't take forever. And so then we were and driving a truck. Not a lot of money to go ahead to get the no. training either. So, no. I mean, it was enough, but it wasn't too bad. And so, number, so that's number five. Number four. Number four. Number four was when we, um, we started this, we had a real desire sort of a driven desire, I guess, in our minds that we wanted to help folks. Um, you know, that, that was just something that both her and I both felt. And uh, we came out of a career where we were helping okay. people and we wanted to continue on with that. So, you know, any chance we've gotten, we've tried to help people along uh, with their, you know, whether it was helping folks out that might be a little down on their luck or just talking to people. Uh, or just was, specifically what we haul. Yeah. You know, we know that what we do benefits other people. Yeah. And um, that's part of the reason we got into what we're in right now with the reefer and the, the you know, the white glove trucking right. part of it is we are helping massive amounts of people right. with every load we do. So that was important. We wanted to have a job that we felt, you know, was beneficial to a lot of folks. And then on our personal level, we would be able to help people out too. Um, and that's sort of going to tie into the number two thing, and I'll tell you about that in a second. But, <laughs> and the um, other part of that is, is, with, I mean, even doing the YouTube part of it, it this right. is to help other people out. It's not to help us. It's, right. It's, it's to just see, to show others what. Yeah, we wanted to, you know, the whole purpose of this channel was to show people what we did and possibly help others, you know, because we have people that ask questions and over the years and people at home and people we meet on the road. And, so, yeah, that's sort of why we went with that. So that's number four. Number three was to be our own boss. I don't work <laughs> like, or play well with others a lot of times. And he does not run well. <laughs> my father was a entrepreneur. He basically owned his own business the entire time I was growing up. And so that's sort of the thing that I grew up in. And my parents both were, too. Judy's father uh, owned a mechanical contracting company, and that's what... Uh, Judy's mom and dad did, and so and my dad's family were farmers, which were all yeah. you know, family full of entrepreneurs. And so we don't really, uh, you know, we've had jobs, but you know, after a while, it just becomes painful. Yeah. <laughs> painful. Uh, yeah. Not. I mean, we did have a we had a decent job. I, I can't really complain about it, but I just sort of felt trapped. I think she did in some ways too, me more than her. Um, so, yeah. And, but the other job we had also had somewhat of a flexibility in scheduling and days off and things like yeah, that. We so we wanted to do a career that was, that was, fortunate. yeah, similar to the fact that we could, if we needed to be home, we could go home. Right. You know, and that, it, it may not always seem the case out here, but when it comes down, push to shove, we're not making money, but we can we could go home whenever we right. needed to for emergencies and things like that. Well, so. and we sort of, you know, we have flexibility with our scheduling as far as what loads we take and what areas we want to go to. I mean, we're sitting in Minnesota right now because we chose to come to Minnesota. Right. Uh, Not everybody would do that. But well, we yeah, <laughs> I mean, we're just crazy. Um, but, at, you know, later on this winter, you know, I don't like snow. Uh, <laughs> really to drive in it it's pretty to look at if as long as i'm sitting where there's a fireplace uh, but you know we have the flexibility to try to schedule our loads around that within reason and uh you know and if we basically decide we don't want to take a load we don't have to take a load uh, and uh, if we want to go to california we can go to california probably 
Um, but yeah, it's this flexibility, being your own boss. We make most of the, 95% of the decisions. All of the financial you know. decisions and all of the scheduling and, um, you know, all, right. of, all of the decisions. But we own the truck. So that is a little different than folks that drive for a fleet owner. They don't have nearly the flexibility as we do. I mean, we make all the decisions pretty much. Uh, but it's still pretty much an entrepreneur. You're on your own out right. here in the truck making those decisions. When we drove for fleet owners, we drove it like it was on our, our own, own truck. truck. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we've made a lot of the decisions. Uh, we were constrained sometimes by where we had to buy tires or something like that. But, you know, um, we were still pretty much in control. And so we really like that portion. So, number three. That was number three. Number three. Number or two. Two. I have it on my phone. Forget. Yes. Number two. Money. Yes. We had to make a living and it had to be compar comparable to what we were making before with the bills that we had at home. And we actually found that we actually make a little more than we made before, <laughs> which is always good. Uh, you know, this is a fairly lucrative job. Uh, we make multiple six figures in income and revenue per year for the business uh, for the business we personally make six figures a year for us together <laughs> together uh, as a family Not each. <laughs> um, honestly we would have a very hard press time to go home and make the money that we make out here on the road uh, I mean, I have a bachelor's With degree. With all of the things we've talked about before. Judy <laughs> has a master's degree in education. Uh, and even with those degrees, you know, the jobs that, that we would be able to go home and work at are sort of limited, uh, especially where we live. We live in a small sort of rural part of the state. Uh, I think if we were to actually get jobs, and, and not make no mistakes, the jobs are there. You know, I have a background in IT if we decided to move to Columbus or someplace like that, we would both be able to find probably better paying jobs. But we like where we live. Yep. And, and we uh, like doing what we're doing right and now. And we like what we're doing now. So it's great to have a job that you really like. And this is the best job I've ever had. Uh, I don't even really consider it a job. You know, it's fun to do. And uh, all and the other parts. Freight has its ups and downs. But where we have chosen in expediting this it has I don't think it it drops quite as much as some of the other freight areas do right. so we you know the income's pretty steady which is also very important when you have bills to pay at home and right. things like that there are down yeah. times don't forget we own the truck so we have big bills to pay. <laughs> we make good money you know. but we make big <laughs> yeah. yeah and there are down times which we have to plan for right. um, uh, some people will get out here and spend a buku's amount you know they see all those numbers coming in and great money coming in and they go out and and purchase things uh, and not really prepare themselves for the down times but right. the money is there and what we needed Jim and I are not, we don't have to make a ton of money. We would love to make a ton of money, but we're, we're about making sure whatever we have, you know, breaking even, but we would like right. to make more for retirement would be nice. But, <laughs> and, and this job will allow that? us to do that. Yeah, <laughs> We're not going to retire, right? I don't know what that is. So, uh, so anyway, that's number two. Number two. The number one reason is... We get to travel the country, yeah, and, and we that's get to see ours. all kinds of stuff, and we get to meet all kinds of people, um, learn we, all different types of cultures, and you know, just within the United States, there's so much difference in in the regional areas we, and even the local. We have areas. truthfully seen things that we would never ever have experienced uh, staying at home and working the jobs that we did. I mean, we may have been able to go on vacation. You know, once or twice a year, but uh, but to see it on the level of what we're seeing it right now, right. you know, I mean, when when if we would have vacation from our other jobs, it'd be like, all right, if we wanted to go to California, we'd have to get on a plane and go right. out there. We'd miss everything in between, right. you know. And it's it's, uh, it's neat. I mean, the places that we have seen, we have been. I think we've said this before, but we have been in all the lower forty-eight states. We have been in all the provinces of Canada that border the United States, plus Nova Scotia. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've just seen 
right down there on the Mexico, Mexico line. We haven't been to Mexico, but we've yeah, been right down uh, there. And, and on top of that, with the, the places we've seen, it's just the people that we've met. I think I, I value that more than probably even the places we've been to. We've made so many good friends out here. Uh, you know, people that we would never have met staying in Ohio. I mean, Judy and I led pretty sheltered lives. <laughs> You know, it was rare that we would ever leave the state, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I love Ohio. Um, you know, I wouldn't really want to live anyplace else, but it is nice to get out and visit, I guess. Um, and that's that's an opportunity that we would never have had unless we were doing what we're doing right now. Oh, another thing about travel, it allows you to eat different types of food than what you are used to in your little part of Ohio. <laughs> yeah, and we're really good at that part of the job. <laughs> so um, we've been introduced to foods that I never even heard of. Believe it or not, I never heard of gumbo until we went out here on the road. Gumbo. Never, I mean, never we've, imagined. We've been to Venice Beach. We've been to the, the mountains. And we've been to the, to the ocean. We actually had one load where we literally could have stuck our toes in the Atlantic and two days later stuck our toes in the Pacific. We were that close to the ocean. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just really cool that we've got to see that. And of course, we get to see it together. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I guess that should have been our number one reason, a job that we could do That's together. our bonus reason, Judy. That's our bonus. There's your bonus, we everybody. We get to do it together. <laughs> uh, but seriously, we have been married 30 years, and we're very happy. Uh, and we're, you know, we're looking forward to another 30 that. People sharing the road are probably not looking forward to us sharing the road in 30 years, but hey, uh, who knows what we'll do. Um, so anyway, those are our top, top five top five reasons. I'm sure there are others. If there are, let us know. Yeah, please comment uh, below with comment some below. of your reasons for wanting to do this. Yeah, we'd like to know. And like I said, we're with this upcoming series that we're going to do, uh, it's always nice to hear other people's stories or suggestions or thoughts on that. So. Don't forget to like our videos and hit the little subscribe button and ring the little bell. Ring! And what would you guys do if I didn't go ring? You'd probably go. I don't know. Maybe one of these days we'll find out. <laughs> oh, I won't do it. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. So long, everybody. Good night. Good night. Sweetheart.